Kingdom of the Dead, primarily a one-man show from developer Durigo Games and publisher Hook, is a stylish, horror-themed first-person shooter with a more methodical pace than I expected. You take the role of an agent operating along the US East Coast, a not-so-subtle Lovecraftian reference, tasked with shutting down the gates to the titular kingdom and defeating Death's armies before they can invade the mortal realm. Supposedly, your agent Chamberlain, professor turned army general, now working on the secret government program known as Gatekeeper. But honestly, the in-game plot details are kept to a bare minimum, and I'd have never known that if not for reading the store page description. That said, Kingdom of the Dead is not without some sense of narrative or character evolution. Agent Chamberlain often banters with his possessed abyssal sword, which he relies on to destroy cursed skulls that maintain gateways to Death's Kingdom, but he does not trust it. The sword clearly has its own plans, and expresses scepticism at the agent's altruism and selflessness. This relationship provides ample opportunity to expand on the agent's personality during mission introductions, foreshadow some later events, and actually provides a satisfactory ending that still leaves room for more content from the developer or the modding community. Of course, as with most indie games, Kingdom of the Dead prioritizes gameplay first and foremost, but it wasn't the fast and chaotic retro shooter experience I expected. Your protagonist can certainly sprint, jump, and circle strafe with the best of them, but the mid-19th century weapons – think revolvers, a double-barrel shotgun, repeater rifle, and a hand-crank gatling gun – all have relatively low fire rates. To keep things balanced, enemies and their projectiles move quite slowly, resulting in a far more methodical shooter than I expected, with a focus on positioning yourself to avoid projectiles while lining up headshots on advancing enemies. You wage battle against Death's forces across eight missions before a grand finale, with several available at any given time sitting on your office desk. It's an eclectic mix of abandoned locations that'll be familiar to horror fans, but not all stages are made equal. The opening mansion mission is a sprawling multi-phase battle across the outer grounds, through the expanse of interior, and into the twisted depths. Ascending an old clock tower, batting through alleyways, run-down interiors, and leaping across rooftops was equally impressive. Others, such as a short jaunt through a forest, or a claustrophobic battle through an improbably long train, feel uninspired in contrast. Unfortunately for Kingdom of the Dead, level design makes or breaks the experience, as the enemies you face lack any complex or unpredictable behaviours. Melee enemies just lope towards you at varying speeds, while ranged enemies tend to stay back and cast either slow-moving orbs that you can shoot down, or fire slightly faster-moving bullets. As such, falling back, lining up headshots, and dismembering weapon-bearing limbs is a sound strategy throughout. It's the sheer number and mix of enemies in the later stages, coupled with trying to spot them in the dark, that'll cause you trouble. The simplistic enemy design also applies to the gimmicky boss encounters, most of which just require you circle strafe or backpedal, or firing your biggest gun, sometimes at a weak spot. Several bosses do have one-hit kill moves, so trying not to get stuck on objects or enemies in the arena is often the greater challenge. They're all visually interesting and themed around the environment, but fighting them is really as tense or exciting as getting there in the first place. The difficulty settings take inspiration from the Thief games, upping the enemy count and adding mission objectives, but it's only really the change to the combat ferocity that feels significant. The level structure does not change with new objectives, nor does the placement of civilians you can save, and you can even fulfill all these optional objectives while playing on easy if you want. Now, several set-piece moments and boss fights with mobs are the real challenge on the highest difficulty, when you struggle to find space to move, and tracking multiple incoming projectiles becomes nearly impossible. Regardless of your choice, however, there are ample checkpoints, including one before each boss fight, plenty of ammo, and several heart power-ups to find in each level that increases your total health pool. Just be warned that checkpoints are temporary, and you need to complete a mission to save your progress. The last element to touch on, and perhaps the most consistently impressive, is the presentation. The pen and ink style might frustrate you if you used FOSS-paced FPS games that used colour to convey player information clearly, but in Kingdom of the Dead, obscuring enemies in darkness, or against visually busy backdrops, is all part of the horror experience. Ghouls lunge out of the shadows, undead mages fling glowing projectiles from the distant gloom, and twisted birds descend from pitch black skies. It's only weapons, ammunition, and health pickups that possess a distinct coloured glow to keep you restocked during battle. Relying on sound to pinpoint nearby foes, and most of them have a distinctive cry, ramps up the tension and highlights the creepy ambience. Combat, although slower paced and less chaotic than its peers, 
Sounds good, thanks to loud gunfire and suitably fleshy sounding impacts when you land a headshot or remove a limb. The soundtrack is also fantastic, if a little limited. There are moody, tension-building tracks during moments of cautious exploration, but also high-tempo, catchy electronic beats for when the action heats up. It all comes together to feel like an appropriately B-grade horror movie experience. Unfortunately, several technical issues need to be patched ASAP. The first is the unexpected performance drops during several missions, which feels more like a rendering issue on larger maps. The framerate drop had little to do with the action on screen, and more to do with my viewing direction, almost as if the game is failing to simplify geometry or cull objects obscured from view. Next is the ever-present risk of sprinting on sloped surfaces and being launched in a random direction, sometimes with lethal results. The final issue was two checkpoint related bugs, both right before set piece moments. In both cases, reloading left me dropping through the level geometry and dying repeatedly until I restarted the entire level. Those technical issues aside, I still enjoyed my time with Kingdom of the Dead and plan to go back and finish several outstanding levels on Princeps Agente difficulty, trying out some unlocked cheats and maybe a range of visual filters. When you combine the heavy atmosphere, distinctive visuals, soundtrack, and minute-to-minute -minute gunplay, slower and methodical than most, it makes for a weirdly compelling package. So long as you're not looking for another FOSS-paced, twitchy, gore-soaked boomer shooter, Kingdom of the Dead is a great pick for both FPS and horror fans.